29 minutes now. And we're live, baby. And we're live. We're not live. We gotta record on this. We gotta hit the record button on the on the record button. Oh, go go baby. Oh. Okay. Ooh, that camera's cutting off the whole right side of me. See? It just probably got bumped. It probably did get bumped. There I mean, we go. Pearl, Pearl's whipping her tail. Yeah, Pearl's pretty aggressive. Pearl's whipping her tail back and forth. Her, her tail back and forth. Well, that's fine. This is Please name don't pending. Do, don't do that. Baby. Part two. <laughs> now hold on. Somebody scream! Ah! Fucking Toby's like, me too, me too. <laughs> Look, that movement ended like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this is part two. Part two, name pending. Name pending. Because I am still Keeper. I'm still Mike. I, I'm Mike. I mean, is you're he, Keeper. I mean, he is Mike, but he's also... No, that's Kelt. No, I'm Mike. Oh, fuck. No. Wait, I'm name pending. Fuck. I'm, <laughs> Who's I'm, on first? I'm <laughs> name, he's pending, that's Keeper. Ah, fuck. No, this is messed... Cabo. That's Pearl. I'm Hello. <laughs> I'm Keeper. I'm Mike. I'm Kelt. And this is name pending. Part two. Part two. Because, you know. Continued. Why Continu not? Yeah, continued. Because. Because more alcohol makes everything better. Well, plus it's storming out. And we don't want to necessarily be. I don't want. I now. honestly don't want you guys to drive through the rain and the hail. Yeah. Possibly, possibly tornadoes in your area. And possibly, possibly, I, I might go back to no home. <laughs> we talked about that. <laughs> I rebuke that right now. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. So, my coworker lives literally about a mile away from where you're at. I yeah. keep trying to get him out when we're shooting a podcast at your place because. Good old boy, he's army, and you know what? I like to fuck with the army guys. They're they're hilarious. They're fun. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. You know what we need to get on a podcast at Coast Guarder? Because they're not really even. Are they? You mean puddle now. pirates? Yeah, yeah. Or merchant marine? <laughs> <laughs> even I mean, worse. They're, they're, they're not technically military anymore. <laughs> they're neither one is merchant marines department. or what no, navy went department into. Department of Defense. They're uh, homeland security. Yeah, so when, when you retire out of the Navy, you've got a, a shoe in in the Merchant Marines, but jeez. Well, that's the interesting part. That's because a Because even Homeland Security has a shoe in for VA if they have Coast Guard or Merchant Marines. Like, VA still covers both of them. Like, interesting, but good well, to know. Well, VA covers any DOD. DOD. Employee. But we're talking about Homeland Security, which is Coast Guard down. Yeah, Coast Guard is no Homeland longer false. Coast Guard is no longer DOD. But isn't Homeland Security DOD? No. no. They're not Department Homeland of Defense? Homeland Security is its all other branch. Yeah, Homeland Security answers to Congress directly. But it's still a defense. No. Okay. It's It's interesting. Because I mean, it, now it we have, sounds militant because it doesn't make any sense. Now we have sense. all these puddle pirates that stole from Navy ranks yep. that are now retiring. Because yep. let's look about it. We're 2023. We're still, until we hit 2005, so until we hit 2025, we're not going to hit the retirement of people that joined after 9-11. Well, and here's the thing is like now we're, we're going into peacetime military and we're seeing... Yeah. Was it last year or the year before they took off GWAT? Global War on Terrorism. They took off this ribbon. You can no longer get in and basic for joining. Really? Are you serious? Dead serious. And to the point that I was just like, okay, cool. I mean, we're... Is that the defense ribbon? No. So your national defense ribbon is... Oh, no. I think they took that one off, too. Because, Wait, they did. Because we're they not took off national wartime. defense. No, yeah. if we're not at wartime, we're I don't not, think you'll get that anymore. We're, no, not wartime. We're not in conflict yeah yeah military talk well, it is wartime yeah but yeah we're not in conflict so right yeah we have people just showing up to bases with just their marksman ribbon air force wise marksman ribbon and congratulations you completed basic yeah so you can at most you can do three you can do your academia yeah so you did 90 plus percent air force wise you did great shooting and you completed base. One's given, the other two are earned. Earned meaning you did top percentile. I thought I you got national defense as completion from 
National defense, I thought, was, was because... Boot camp. No, I thought national defense was because you joined during wartime. We can look okay. it up. Though. Yeah, I mean, do do the internet thing. This is the great thing about being in 2024, is unlike the 1920s, we can actually look stuff up. This is the best part. Well, they didn't part. have TV in the 20s anyway. This anyways, is the best so. part about having cameras and having phones. <clears throat> like... Oh, yeah, real cameras? Well, and having cameras and that and then a graphics guy who can then put graphics we're on like that. We're like a real boy. We're, we're getting pretty No, people are... Sh- okay, so currently this is off usamm.com. National Defense Service Ribbon. To be eligible, members must have served honorary during the following time. The Korean War, they give the dates. The Vietnam War, they okay. give the dates. The Gulf War, they give the dates. Okay. And then the War on Terrorism from... September 11th, yet to be determined. Oh, so it's still valid. It's still valid. So people can still be legal. So something I regret doing is I regret not getting my greens set up before I left the military. Explain. So like getting all my ribbons done, getting everything sewn on properly. Getting my dress greens set up. Because I had greens then. Like now they had blues. Yeah. I think no, they're going to the pink and greens now. Oh, they fuck went to the yeah. pink and greens. Oh, yeah. yes, which looks sexy as shit. Air Force so, should have kept that. They never so should have changed. The pink and greens are supposed to be a throwback to a modern throwback to World War II time military yes. dress Army uniform Air for Army. I don't ever remember pink being in a uniform. It, that's that's it just what they called them. They weren't well, fully pink. No, they just called them the pink. It was and a greens. lighter shade, darker shade. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. They were called pink and greens. Okay, but it it's definitely interesting because me and my mom were talking about this on the way home, and so when you leave the military, your DD two fourteen is as of this date. Yes, and my brother's about to get out. Ardvark, he's over here just fucking game over. Ardvark, us. Ardvark. Wait, which one were you? <sighs> Were you hippo or rhinoceros? I was hippo. I you was were hippo. hippo. What was I? I don't remember. I know Stephen was rhino. Stephen was rhino. Was I like camel or something? I don't think you're a camel. I'm gonna have to ask Ardvark because he has a better memory than. Yeah, me. he's got better memory. He's drank less than us. He's what deaf. the hell are we well, talking about? Well, I don't know. About? He just turned twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> so so, cool. so we we started playing Risk of Rain too, and. I just brought my brother in because he finally got back home, had a decent enough computer to start playing games. I was like, okay, cool. We're we're all fucking with Risk of Rain too. Yeah. And we're just fucking gaming. And I was like, all right, Ardvark. And because he said something, he said something stupid. He said something dumb. And it was us all being military. We're all, like, well, all you're being veterans. And it was just like, well, fuck it. He's Rhino, you're Elephant. Um, that's what it was. It was elephant. Elephant. <laughs> Cause he's so fucking tall. It was like he's elephant. You should be giraffe. He's rhino. I'm hippo because I'm the fattest one of the three of us at the time. And you're Aardvark because you're always sniffing shit out of everywhere. And no shit. His steam name is Aardvark. He loved it. Like, he loves it. This is it justice? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, to this day, it like, sounds like justice. I, I don't call him justice. I call him Aardvark. And, but it, me and my me, I'm on my way home, calling my mom, and she's like, "Well, he's about to leave. He his final day out is technically Sunday evening from guard, and then Monday he's done. Like he's fully out. DD two fourteen is gonna be coming home with it, or emailed or mailed, whatever." And I was like, "All right, cool. I mean, my DD two fourteen's been updated four times since I got out in twenty eighteen." And she's like, "What?" I was like. I don't know. I don't understand what you don't understand. What do you mean? Well, why has it been updated? Well, because I had ribbons, I had medals, I had achievements going yeah. through that it took time. Like my la- last year, I got my last achievement. Like that was the last one that came out to the point it's in a box somewhere in my house. Can you tell can I tell you about my last award that I got? Let's my, go. My, my my ETS award. I didn't even read my last award, so let so, in order to get my... It's, e- it's a medal, a ribbon, somewhere in a box. In order to get my ETS award. Ooh. What is the ETS? Let's play dumb here. Um, I'm Air Force. Yeah. 
No, it's not early termination. Is it? Estimated term of separation. Yeah, estimated. Is what estimated I, time of separation. Oh, okay. yeah. Term. Time. So, so it, that's what we refer to as. Okay, you're getting out. Goodbye. It's your um, it's your two your weeks ETS then, date. Yeah. You your ETS date is your two weeks, four years in advance. Yeah. Right. So, I'm 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 ETSing. Um, I had already outboarded medical, which means that I wasn't allowed to do PT. Or anything, or, or That's go to not field true. training. Air Force exercises. doesn't do that. Army definitely does. I wish Navy that was does fucking too. true. So two weeks before I left, I had a PT test. At the time, I was so fucking broken. All I could do was waste. So I don't know if that's actually true or not for you. Because here's the thing. I um, asked. I'm curious. So I only know the Air Force wise. We have... Two different branches here other than Air Force that I would love to learn more about so, in that sense because we all separated. I got sat down by my first sergeant and he said, okay, well, we had your ETS award done up, but you haven't done a recent PT test. No shit. And so I said your, your award depended on your PT test. And so he was not going to... Alexis Patrick. Sorry. Are you good? You need to take that? Yeah. You need to take that? I'm going to take All right. that. All good. No, but let, let's jump back into so, ETS. Your ETS package depended on your PT test, Army-wise? So it did not. This was just some... Ooh. Dogs, people, smaller area. I'll hang that back up. You jump back on camera I we're gonna include this because you know are we though maybe not why not it's loosely hanging on I'm good there which means you should be good but we're talking about ETS so, Air Force wise I so in all I actuality, have packages moving throughout in all actuality the 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 first sergeant was playing fuck fuck games. Oh, so he had a he had an issue. So he was trying to get the PT scores up, right? Like the averages up. So he needed and it's more people. Have someone who's about to leave. Yes, and, and so you know my PT scores had always been you know stellar. That if we can have someone who's been track record. Well, I mean, I don't know deep. if they were stellar, but, but so they were. They would pull the average if up. We can, if we can do it above average, yeah, above the issues we have, and you're about to get out, you're gonna I, look. I sure as fuck wasn't failing my PT test. You're gonna look good for the next yeah. three Air Force wise. If we do good, I had to take it, it once a year. And so that's all he was trying to do is he was trying to get another PT test. This was so your top was, or your chief. This is my top. Your top. And he was like, "Oh uh, yeah, you need to." You need to get because we can't get because you didn't do you and me, my platoon sergeant, my direct NCO, we're all sitting there like, well, this is bullshit. So I go and I do my PT test and I intentionally, because I could have done more, but I intentionally do minimum push ups, do the bare minimum, minimum sit ups, just passing. And then they're like, okay, well, go for your run. And it was only me doing the PT test and my platoon and sergeant's it's like, long run, correct? Yeah, and my platoon sergeant's like, so you're going to go to your barracks room and disappear, and we're going to mark you down for the minimum run time. And I was like, sounds good to me. So my last PT test was seriously, because I just had knee surgery, just had back surgery. Like, I was so fucking broken. Couldn't do push-ups, couldn't do sips, couldn't do the run. So all I showed up for was waist measurement. And it was like, you're a 34. Congratulations, you have 100%. So I was a great fucking statistic. But it was, it was comical because everyone I was working with, because I, I pissed. Oh, here we go. Pearl on cast. Ah, Co-host is finally here. Oh, 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 oh. And all the dogs sniffing her, saying, hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. But. Do you want to take a whiff? Of her? No. <laughs> but last year I got my last accommodation. I think I should be offended. You should be. And it was accommodation or commendation? It was, I can pull up the award. It was because I got shot at downrange, pretty much because I'm Air Force. I took fire. 
during some situation somewhere. It's a it's a red ribbon with yellow stripes going down it. Let me let me pull it up. But essentially, I got awarded for it finally last year. Okay. And my mom's like, I mean, you've called me on sat phones for years. I was like, okay, that doesn't mean it translates to accommodations. Yeah, no, that doesn't translate to awards. I think the thing that frustrates me most about the way our military does awards is that they base it off of rank. If you're an officer. Combat Action Medal. So I got the Combat Action Medal. Um, this started in 2007. The criteria, the, prin- the principal eligibility criterion is that the individual must have been under direct fire and hostile fire while operating in an unsecured space defined as outside the defended perimeter, which means outside fobs, outside. Yeah. Or physically engaging hostile forces with direct and lethal fire. So, finally got that one last year, and my mom was like, oh, do you have a shadow box? It's like, no. no. And she was like, where's all your military? I have all my uniforms and all my ribbon. All with the freaking... Because oh, wow. Congratulations. I, I, I didn't get all those. I give the Air Force props because I just did my job. The, seriously, that's what... I, I, was a, I started as pararescue. I, I wanted to be... The top dogs. I want to be the tip of the spear. Yeah. Body couldn't take it. Wasn't able to do it. So I jumped over to the next thing. I was like, oh, you can put warheads on foreheads from a click. And I was like, that my, sounds My great. favorite thing. You want to talk about someone doesn't actually do anything? Calm. Have them talk about warheads on foreheads. So I get calm. And then I get attached to combat calm. And I was like, okay, I get a taste of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I'm doing this with individuals and we're going down range. We're doing dirty deeds. We're doing, we're doing all we need to do to keep freedom free. Dirty deeds. Done dirt cheap. <laughs> but we're doing what we have to do in this specific event that I got awarded for. All I fucking did was ran ammo casings. Like we're talking about the 80 pound boxes. Yeah. From firing location to firing location to firing location. Because we had we had the Marines and we had the Army there. Those were the two guys that were two other branches that were there, and because most of my stuff at the time was IT, I build your connection to the outside world. Like I did dirty shit, but what I got awarded for was running ammo from point A to point B <clears throat> under fire, and then occasionally shooting fire back, and that's what I got awarded for. I was like, eh. it's like I just. I did what so, you needed yeah, to I mean, be you did done. Your job, yeah. But well, I'm also enlisted. I now, mean, if an officer did it, it was like, oh, you get this. So, you you get this. so I got frustrated by the your award is dictated by your rank because when I was getting mm-hmm. out my ETS award, I got put in for an if eight. I got E five. If yeah. you're above E six, you I, get a different one. I got put in for an Army Commendation Medal. My Army Commendation got Medal got, got downgraded, downgraded to an Army Achievement Medal. And don't, like, if you read the bullets, like, the bullets were fucking massive for the Archon. And they are like, yeah, no. So I worked with an Army EOD guy. He ended up switching over to comm so he could slowly separate. He had no fucking hand. Like... Seriously, from here down was gone. He had a prosthetic and he was working IT with me with the reserve unit before I got out because I was their active correspondent. And no joke, his whole thing was just like, like he's over here just using like, just one digit pigeon pecking and typing. And it's like, bro did fucking work. He still did like 45 words per minute. Typing with one hand. That's impressive. And just pecking. Like, dude's over here bouncing his hand. And I was just like, all right, I needed to ask. We're out of the smoke. But I was like, what'd you do? Because I know you weren't always coming. He's like, well, I was always EOD. Ooh, excuse me. I was, EO, I was EOD over in Afghanistan. And he had, um, the issue was someone lit the charge. The wire was still wrapped around his hand. And because it's phosphorus, wired into the wire yeah it burned through it 
Ooh. Like, it burned it down here at his wrist. That had to be painful. So he ended up getting flown to Germany, and they cut it about here. So it's uneven. Yeah. But it's where all the cells were still... To the point he had two prosthetics. One he could bring into the building, and the other that was his high techy techy connected and he thought it and it yeah. did it the same way neurons work. And I was like, bro, I just got an award for running ammo. Yeah. And it's like I got out with a line number for E5 and I have three rows of ribbons. And he was like, I have two and I got out at E5. It's like <sighs> Like it's a piece like, of shit now. Exactly. It's like you feel like a piece of shit. It's like my dirty deeds, my military service was very different than the way his See, was. But I will never be a piece of shit like the lieutenant in one of my lower enlisted battles. The stolen valor bullshit? No, no. Who <laughs> deployed <laughs> in a combat zone. Don't tell me it's fucking Puerto Rico to or Ku- some- To Kuwait. They deployed to a combat zone so that they could wear a combat badge for a month. For a month, mind you. A combat badge. Or a combat patch. Um, And they're like, well, we're flying mission into... And the best, like, the best worst part is at one point, like... Again, we're getting near the end of my enlistment, right? And he said, like, some new soldiers are in. And he's sitting there talking about, like, his time in the sandbox. And I was like... You were in fucking Kuwait, bro. Stop fucking holding up that combat patch. So, you can touch on this one because my dad brought up when he was back in the 80s. He was like, he was an E1, E2. He was like, oh, go watch the Chiefs Cups. The Chiefs, Mm -hmm. the coffee cups. So, I never knew until later, you never watch the Chiefs Cups. There's 20 years of coffee stains and you fucking leave them. My dad was like, those are stained. Like, more than like a week. He was like, no. So he goes, I'll give you 20 bucks if you wash all the cups that I was supposed to do. At the time, 20 bucks was probably in the 80s. Yeah. 20 bucks meant something. Yeah. 20 bucks was more than just 20 bucks. 20 bucks, 20 bucks nowadays. No. 20 bucks. 20 bucks went somewhere. And no joke. E1, just coming off. Seaman Apprentice, I think, is. And no joke, just on the boat, all the cups were porcelain clean to a point he's finishing up Master Chief's cup. (laughs) I bet that Master Chief had a fit. Senior comes in, grabs his cup, starts pouring coffee, puts the coffee pot down. Dumps the coffee. And we're talking Navy coffee. Navy coffee at the time was just like... Tar. Tar. Yeah. It was it was black tar heroin coffee. Yeah. Like, hands down. The he, way, if you're in the military, you're be. supposed to be made. He dumped it, looked at it, lost it. Like, <laughs> so the joke about Navy and Cal can dump on this one is... E1 and T2 also get there two hours early to make that tar. Yep. But the senior chief, so chief, you have no stars. Senior chief, you have a top heavy star, which means you're meant to prove something. Yeah. It's top heavy. And then chief, you're good. You have a balance. Master chief, you have a balance. You have two top stars, but. But senior chief, if you fuck with senior chief who's trying to make it up. Yeah. Worst person to fuck. You'd rather fuck with the E9 <clears throat> than the yeah. E8. So my dad got out of E8 down his line. He never drank coffee. He drank tea, so his cup was always clean. Wow, bitch. Your dad was a senior? Yep. He he had a line number for master, but he didn't want to go back to the sandbox. But I don't blame him. He was, don't blame him. He was an E2, E3, and E1 fucking shows up. Thanks, brothers. Yep. E1 shows up. Get you some. New guy on the deck, and he's just fucking porcelain. You could fucking see the white on it. Senior chief comes in, pours it, dumps it. It's like, puts the coffee pot down, walks the like five, 10 feet on the deck in, in the galley, dumps it out. It was like, who the 
fuck washed my cup. Like my dad said, for the next 30 minutes, he walked up and down. At the point, this was a minesweeper. So it's only... Oh, yeah, it's a tiny boat. It's a smaller boat. They're 225. He, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> like he's walking up and down for the next 30 minutes. Who Waking everybody up off watch, off fire duty, waking everyone up. And it's a small boat. Everything fucking echoes. Yeah. Everyone's awake at this point. The commander of the ship wakes up. And he was like in 05. Fluce is out there. Oh and my god. She mm. just fucking face planted. She about near did, yeah. No, she did. I didn't she see her. She went full into the ground. She hears floofs out there. But my dad was like, it was the most comical fucking thing. Because the only thing I was warned in A school, tech school, trade school, never wash a chief's cup. That was the only thing my dad was warned about. So he was like, I would rather lose money out of my income and not be at fault and be on someone's shit list. But when you pay somebody else to do it, now you're at the top of the fucking hill. So this went down. And Senior finally finds out my dad paid someone to do it. He was like, you're the smartest fucking bullshit dumbass ever. He's like, I have you in my eyes. To the point down the line, my dad thinks E6. This dude's chief. He's E9. They work together to the point that at this point, they could start a mutiny. They had this bond that was built off of a coffee cup. It was like, to the point that even, even the captain was like, Look, I know you and the chief could start shit. Just keep everything kosher. Like, the amount of times my dad has been told that on HSV Swift or at USS Dextrous. So, this is the problem with the Air Force. Because realistically, the the NCO Corps should be able to throw overthrow the officers. Should be, but they're but fucking castrated. The, but with the way that the Air Force has castrated their NCO Corps... Like, and they wonder why they can never get anything done in a timely manner. It's because, like, well, because you... You hit E5, E6, is like, can can I do this, Lieutenant? Can I can I do this? Is yeah. This, is this good? Pretty so, please, sir. Why the fuck am I asking some fucking just graduated from college, Lieutenant, what the fuck to do when I've been in for fucking five to ten years? E5 so for your, for your rank, a Lieutenant is at E1? E1, yeah. Okay, Our so rank, in the Navy, I think, yeah, it's both ensign. of us. Yeah, it's ensign, then uh, junior grade. Yeah, lieutenant JG, coach. lieutenant. So, yeah, 01, 02, 03. Air Force wise, 02 is when you start making changes. For you guys, it's 03. Yeah, honestly. Once you hit the railroad tracks. Honestly, until you make 03 in the Army, yeah. you don't start making railroad changes. Railroad tracks. Yeah. Air Force does 02. You're no longer a butter bar. Yeah. Single gold. Yeah, single bar. gold bar. We so I, which then goes up to silver bar and then double double. I talked about but, so many. But in the in the air force, it's the moment that an officer shows up. Doesn't re- matter what rank they are. The moment that a fucking officer shows up, they get to just make whatever fucking dumbass decisions. Your they gold. Want. You can make whatever changes you want. To the point to where I've literally sat there and listened to an officer talking to an airman about all his great plans and everything. And I'm talking lower enlisted, right? Yeah. And I was like, I went to one of the senior NCOs and I was like, you need to do something yeah, you about need to fix this, this. Right. lieutenant. He's like, uh-huh. fuck am I dealing with here? What the fuck is this shit? But it's, it's fine. We'll jump on another topic. Hurry up to wait, to wait. And <laughs> intermission. Intermission. Like, was it me and Jess went to um, Texas Roadhouse? Yeah. And there was a huge, like, normally I leave a decent tip. I know. Server sucks. I get mm-hmm. it. And I will always do my best to make it as easy as possible. Give me a tea. Give me a mixed drink of whatever. Give yep. me something strong. And then bring me a water. So that way I have three drinks to change off of. And that is the hardest part about me. Once you get that, I'm good. I know you can fill up as you go. But there was a tabletop of about 10. They're all, I would say, under 24. 
Mm. Ooh, that's rough. Tabletop Gen A's. <laughs> and I know they're probably not going to leave a decent tip. No. So, they're going to leave what they think is a decent tip. And in the back of my mind, I was like, just double. Whatever whatever my cost is, double that. That's his tip. And Jess was like, well, how much was it? I was like, oh, it was only about like 120, one, or 130, whatever it was. It was like I, I just doubled whatever I was already going to pay. So like 26, so you made it 52 type of thing. Yeah. It was like I just, I just doubled it. Not for them, but because when he came, because... Whoever brought us to the table, the front the host. desk, the host, never brought, never brought Ruth her chair. I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm not gonna fault you on that. I'm mm-hmm. saying you guys are busy. So I looked around. I was like, oh, there's a chair over there. I grabbed it. And at this point, this is my first interaction with the server. It's like, okay, well that that's fine. Because he, he apologized. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I should have brought you that. I was like, you're good. You're busy. Right. So I saw it, I grabbed it, and I just brought it up. Like, nobody stopped me. He just, he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was like, you're good. I'm just like, okay, what's up? You good now? Are you, are you good? <laughs> and now uh, Anakin's like, okay, put me in your lap because that one's on his lap. Anakin's not. So lap. I got that and, and wrote whatever my amount was, doubled it, and boom, I was done. To me, knowing I have this excess that God has blessed me with. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I'm not going to fight over. It's like, no, I'm blessing someone else. It's going to help them. Mm-hmm. I know server life sucks. Mike's talked about how server life sucks. Yeah, waiting tables. It's like, to me, what is an extra this amount? I'm not going to fight ser- over. As a server, you know, you, you got to know how to play the game. Oh, well, that's true too. How to work? Yeah. How to work your table so that you can get the maximum shake, amount of shake that booty. But I'm also. Hey, I worked at a gay hamburger joint, and the more I shook my ass, the better of a fucking day I had. But I also look at this. I know I'm in and out in 45 minutes. I can't eat slow to save my life. <clears throat> like I just can't. No. Like it's just I'm in and out. Like to the point, my wife is the same way. Our yeah. slowest point is our kid. At this point, I paid the bill, I paid the tip. All my drinks are topped off. I'm I'm done. All my all my shit's packed up. Wait on my kid now. And we're out the door to the point that he looked at me and it was kind of like that look of a thumbs up. Yeah. It's like I appreciate you. And he was dealing with maybe seven, eight tables at the time. Dealing with the ten top, dealing with yep. me and my wife De- and a kid. Deal- dealing with the big top. And most people that get big tops, it's a hit or miss. You're like, I'm either gonna get a good tip or I'm gonna get oh, it's gonna over. be garbage. And well, Here's that's a five dollar tip. And that's typically why restaurants like the bigger chain restaurants they have started six or more that are sitting the at the same day. table. Even if you're split check, they have started at twenty to twenty five percent because people will stick gratuity, you. gratuity included in the tab. And for me. In a way that pisses me off to the point I'm not going to go to a place with all my friends because I know someone's going to fuck us over. Like when we were doing our men's forge ministry or forge yeah. in fire and like we'd go with 30 people. So it'd be a 30 top knowing our food's going to take an hour to get there. Knowing, but we're talking, we're having ministry, we're doing all this. This is back when Wolf was alive and we were doing the breakfast. Even after. I was dealing with other ministries and wherever you're talking and... I know it's going to take it, but I'm still, it's like, I got extra money. Here you go. You, you've been blessing us. And then, and see the, it's very important but to, because, does that. well, but it, it's not just, it's not just your, your waiters, it's your bartenders and stuff like that. Like I can never advise more than you walk into a bar where you're going to be there in a minute and you, you just drop a $20 tip off the top. Right. And just to start. And the reason, bar I've been to, I've either dropped twenty or fifty. It was like, here you go. Here's it, the tip off the start. And and this is your starting tip. And the reason being is because like you're if you're gold service, yes, and, and you want to if you're going to be there for a minute, that's what you're trying to gun for. Yeah, I get that. And and I'm I, because I've waited tables for so many years in amongst it's different times of my life. What I do now. And I, and I don't because Monica gets so pissed off at me. 
is I will take a stack of 20 to 50 $1 bills and I set it on the table. And when that waiter says, what's all that? That's your tip. Every time you fuck up, I take a dollar. So I stopped doing that because that gave someone the perspective of, I have to earn this. But they do. No, but look at it this way. My blessing shouldn't have to be earned. Biblically, my blessing, my friendship, my work ethic, my morals shouldn't have to. So me and my they, friendship shouldn't have to be earned. So I know, I know that we're kind of I understand, building. but they're providing a service. And so they are technically earning your There's the a level. The service. And as long as they're above the baseline, to me, they met it. To me. That's my perspective alone. Right. But you no. you were saying something. So I want to change the topic. And I brought this up briefly with him earlier. But I have noticed recently in the greater media that there seems to be a fictional support for... Oh. Yeah. Not even just media. So in society as a whole... Okay. And continue. Society as a whole has... So there seems to be, like, like you see a lot of TV shows. Like, there's that TV show, Lucifer. Lucifer. Where which was it, a great it, Warner it, Brothers depiction. It, oh! Time out. Drinks. We good? I think we're good. Empty is now. Per Pearl. Pearl's <laughs> fucking wrecking shop. She said, she is screw it. So All right, hold on. That Camera's good. Cameras are Camera's good. Cameras good. No, she's she's got those severe balance issues, man, and it hits her. It hits her hard. She just so badly wants to go play with floofs. No, she she wants to be Cat's friend. She does want to be the cat's friend. Like I said, she wants to go play with floofs. But so, so, so in I, society right now, we have okay. this this stigma. Is this, this a global societal issue? No, we're it. talking about nope. American. No, well, no, no. Well, let's I, focus after, on America. After we talked about it, it is more global, but we, where Mike's going, we're only going to focus on American society of this. We have this negative connotation that has now turned positive, which across the board, as Americans, we. No, fear, no, no. Hold on. Okay. Let's finish real quick. Okay. Like, and, and he's kind of deviating. What we're saying is, it, Pearl, stop, girl. Don't whine. Don't whine. What we're saying is, is that. Snag. Uh, <laughs> what we <we're>, okay? <laughs> what we're saying is, is that there is like this with depiction. Lucifer or with a number of other shows, is it's making demons or protagonists, Lucifer or anyone else of the demonic race or fallen angels or anything oh, else. Great. They are the protagonists in these stories. Mm. So and where it came up and where I was bringing up to him, where I realized this is I, I had seen a show popping up on uh, Reddit and it was called has been hotel. Yeah. It's a new Amazon special. It's a new Amazon Satan show. Spawn. Yeah. So the, the, the premise is, is that it's, it's, about demons in hell, right? But the way that they describe... What was the show again? Has Been Hotel. Has Been Hotel. What's Am it was, Amazon's been promoted on Amazon. Oh, yeah, Amazon, okay. It was but, no different than um, the other one. I think it was on Hulu. Hulu promoted the first one that was huge. And this is Has Been And this Hotel. was... It was Satan's Daughter. So Satan's so let me, daughter. let me explain the premise. So the premise in this all comes out in the first episode is that... Um, and, and I'm going to explain it like the show explained it I haven't it seen Has Been Hotel, so I'm out so of this So the, the way the show more or less explained it, and this is where they comes into, we're skewing the Christian faith and everything. Uh -huh. And I don't know how I feel about this, because I do feel, I do like freedom of religion and freedom, freedom of, of thought. Freedom of expression. And, yeah. and expression, but it, it, it gives me some feelings on this. But they say that, you know, God made, you know, Adam... And um, Lilith, and they were created equal, but Adam wanted in Lilith. In the Bible, it was Adam and Eve. Stop. Let me just okay. no, walk oh, okay. it all the way through. All right, go. I'll back um, up. But, but Adam wanted Lilith to be subservient for him, and so Lilith left. 
Mm-hmm. And so then God created Eve for Adam, right? Um, to be his subservient person. And then, you know, uh, Lucifer was, you know, was part of the the angels, but he was creative and he was trying to do things differently and people didn't like Lucifer trying to do things differently and so they cast him down. And so when Lucifer got cast down, he found Lilith and they fell in love. And, you know, then people didn't like the fact, you know, they they gave uh, the the apple to to Eve and, you know, they corrupted her and gave her sin. So they cast them down into hell. And Lilith, this is has been hotel. This is has been hotel's hotel. way of doing it. And then when they were in hell, they they made it and had a child and everything like that. And on a regular basis, the angels from heaven go down to hell and they purge the demons. And it's the demons against the angels. Um, and it's very, it's very promotive of pornography and stuff like that, right? Like it, your your heroes are porn stars. Your heroes are, are, are bad folks. Yeah. So I jumped onto this a little bit. So the other one was FX pushed it out. Fox Studios pushed it out as Little Demon. Yeah. Girl hits her period. Now she's running into pretty much her mom slept with the devil and she's the spawn of the devil. But she had her period so she's age of puberty and pops off and she has all these superpowers she has all these demonic whatever she's able to boom i'm in hell like she has all these abilities like oh you did me wrong smited and have fun you're in hell now like and this is where and the whole christian society was like oh this is horrible and i was like one have you watched it have you understood where this because the first time this came out was lucifer yeah lucifer came out and, well, but Lucifer was a comic. That wasn't the first time. Okay, what was the first? Time? I know Su- Supernatural. Yes. No, no, no. I'm talking about comics because no, Lucifer. You're, you're talking about comics. I'm talking it, about shows. Uh, so, show Lucifer is it's a going comic. back to the comic of Lucifer. Yeah. Talking about DC uh, comics and and this is where that started. Now they made a TV show recently. Before that TV show was Supernatural. Hands down, without a doubt. But but this is where, <coughs> but this they, is and where America to, was in love with Supernatural. Yeah. But I, the, I like Supernatural. I love Supernatural. I didn't watch Relic it. Relic loves Supernatural. But we've changed the perspective. It was like, well, maybe... Well, what was the other one? Charmed. Charmed, Charmed. and Supernatural. It was yeah. like, well, maybe demons are misunderstood. Maybe, yes. And it was like, okay, from a fantasy, from a, a entertainment standpoint... I get where you're coming from. But but it's disconcerting when I sit back and I realize how many shows it's it's like, well, demons are your friends. But it, it comes down to people take that as gospel now. Yes. I and mean, it's, but it's, it's all about, I mean, so my dad is so far left. He's like not even in the parking lot of Wrigley Field. He's in the fucking bar two blocks outside, right? Like that's how far left he is. He watches CNN on repeat because he's afraid he's going to forget it. Like, so when you, when you, the, okay, so we, we touched on this last podcast, not part one, but the, the week before that on how our freedom is an illusion, yeah. right? We have the illusion of freedom. But the government does control us through fear. A lot like how North Korea does. But then you were like, well, you know, when you when you compare the internet, okay, but I'm talking about like TV standards. And North Korea, the Koreans there can only watch what the government allows to be pushed. North Koreans. And North Korea. Yes. So the government tells the TV stations and their local Hollywood, whatever, what they are allowed to push out. And they do so because that content drives the agenda of the politicians so here we go. and we, the government. You touched on politics. Let's jump two feet back because Iowa just had a similar situation of what we're talking about. 
about two, three months ago, Iowa decided because freedom of religion. Yeah. They're allowed to put, was it Balthazar or Bahamut? I know we were talking about it earlier. It's yeah, one, we, I it's, thought you said Bahamut. It's, it's a bee demon and it's lesser than Satan. It's lesser than Lucifer. And it's two or three down. But he's one of Satan's generals. Going off... Don't weak at me while you're licking their cookie. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's going all of, all of this. Mm. And a a senator, someone that was going to run for Iowa senator... <laughs> Front page right there. <laughs> That's a thumbnail. <laughs> I will totally hey, wait. Were someone. you saying something? <laughs> but <laughs> this, lost. Whole, no, this whole mom. freedom of expression thing, freedom of religion... Iowa Keeper. <laughs> Iowa House of uh, Representatives. Their their state Mike. house <laughs> essentially decided to have because the church, the satanic church, decided and pushed all the paperwork, did everything proper is this for in Salem? No, this is in Iowa. Iowa, okay. Iowa pushed it and they have this temple <gasps> in in this satanic temple. Well, Temple, a technically a shrine. We can yeah. call it a shrine. Like a satanic worship. <clears throat> it's center. a shrine, and there's a goat head there, and there's all they wanted a real goat head. The they, Star of David in a circle type of thing. Essentially, yeah, all they right. push all this, but this has been out for about two or three months. They have a ninety day, so they have three months for this to be displayed. Well, a Christian. A Christian person who was running for senator or Congress ended up cutting off the head. He was a Christian, and this has made United States news. Like this has gone all over. So Every, he like took a, a machete and he chopped the head of the goat off. I don't know how he did it. All I know is he took it off. He was arrested, and then it was what? like, oh, he was running for something. And okay, but the real question is. The big but thing no, about this did he is, have did he have the right to do the so? The real the real question is it's freedom not the of right. expression. It's not the freedom. Of, it's not freedom of religion. It comes down to he was a veteran. He was the but the keeper. Point is, why is your dog shaking? Because I'm talking loudly. <laughs> like she, what have you being done passionate. to your animal? What have you done to your animal? We abuse huh? her. Look, she is just I mean, a Anakin shivering. Cowers all Look at her. Time. She is shivering. They both have PTSD. That, storm is coming. that big ass storm is getting ready. But to hit. this all comes down to perspective. Like he viewed this as a Christian, as this is the best way to do it, because in verbiage that he said was founding fathers based this on blank, and he went off on a tangent of Christian beliefs. It was like. Okay, well, that's what he believes in. But we have this other section of people that believe we're allowed to show this. Yeah, the Satanists. Now, we see the Satanist group that did this in Iowa, and we see these Christians that have been pushing for years to post something in the same building, and it hasn't been made. And now we jump back to these TV shows. TV shows are able to push Lucifer, for example, or the hotel, the... Has been hotel. Has been hotel, and we. And have, it, it's not just the show. There's been multiple there's shows. Been multiple like shows. I'm sure if I if I did Google's on it, like, like there would be loose more. research after and, we talk. There's three shows that push it: Lucifer, um, Little Demon, and Has Been Hotel. And, and maybe I'm making maybe I'm making a big deal out of nothing, right? Not, it just though. seems very strange that we're. We are turning, you know, we we are taking the Christian religion, we're twisting the Christian religion, and then we're we're making the what is the and, enemy in this religion. And your after friend. we talked, I did research. Why is it only a Christian religion? Why aren't we fighting other religions at the same point? I mean, yeah, why isn't it happening in Hindu, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, like none of these Judaism? other ones? Why aren't we really, really a like for lack of no, I mean I understand. No, re- really. Like seriously, shut the fuck up and let me talk. Then fucking jump yeah, in. Yeah, fucking talk. I'm trying to be a big shut the boy. fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> then jump in. Okay, you just said this doesn't make any sense. The fuck it doesn't. This is biblical. This this is all biblical. This is all prophecy. This is this okay. There are three elements in the United States 
Hollywood production that control Hollywood. Three entities. The government. BLM, so we're jumping outside of just government. Con- so BLM, we're, we're talking about. No. Luminaria. You're only touching on three. If you're really going to touch on this, because I am well versed in this, the, the and I love the conversation. If you want to see the downfall of any any country, any organization, where does it start? Inside the organization. Nope. It nope. starts at the top. Government. And for us, do we believe the government? Anyone who, in my I belief, mean, anyone it. who believes the government... Or three different separation of powers is leading no. what we're doing? No. I do. I, I do. I do. I just need you to remember that we are from the government and we're here to hey. help. Hey, if I don't make it home tonight... I'm going to find a fucking bed. <laughs> if I don't make it home tonight, you know you, you know who to go after. <laughs> One of us? Yeah. No, the government. <laughs> you're not you're not important enough. Hey, I need you to I need you, you to you check need to understand. Yourself. They will let you live because you will only feed the conspiracy theorists. So here's okay, I hear you. Like they so, seriously will. But the, the the reality is though, government does control what gets pushed out. Think about all the UFO things, right? Nope. I will dive let's, deeper. No, let's go what's deeper than UFO? Nope. Dive deeper. Deeper. Like, yeah, let's go JFK. Nope. What streaming services do you have? All of them. Okay. What do you have here that is available over over anywhere and more? Like, use a VPN. You can get access to multiple shows overseas. Oh, absolutely. But you can get BBC. You can get... But Korea, we have Korea freedom. Channels. So you're right. Government has a... A collection of data that we as Americans are viewing as this. Right. And a lot of what the government wants you to be, to me, and, and I don't I don't see this as a conspiracy because I don't read conspiracy theories. This is just in my head and my my own paranoia. Well, that's where I'm at. I don't read state. conspiracy. So. Right. My own fucked up state might be just... Blah blah blah, or you know, it, it could be my experiences. It could all, it could be all three wrapped up in one. But when it comes down to it, my belief is that what we see in TV or in Hollywood production movies is only what the so government his, wants us to see historically. Though. So hold on, I think the most, I think the most important starting point that we can start at for. Any person watching this, because people are going to watch this and they're going to be like, these guys are fucking crackpots. They're making up shit. They're fucking, no. they're fucking out. On- no, no, because they will. No, they will. But but let's realistically look at this. Let's dive into the history. The first question that anyone, I don't care about your political affiliation or anything else, an American individual, do you trust the government? Fuck no. Well, you, me... Him, we don't trust the government. But we have a bias. But let's look historically. But but how often and I would love I would actually love to fucking walk around like downtown San Antonio. Oh and I'd fucking love a, a video of fucking do you just, trust the government. Do you trust the government? So my coworker, far left, was trust the government left and right. And he was like, Oh yeah, they're doing good. But historically we go back to 1776. What happened? We ended up making our own country. We ended up going all this ways. It's like, but what changed? We stopped trusting our government. Mm-hmm. What was our government? It was England. Yep. So we had this government we no longer trusted because they started taxing us more. They started doing this. So we had that then. Let's jump to it years in the future. 1970, we had this issue with the government then. Where all the black people were dealing with, oh, well, government's throwing coke. All this issue into our areas. So this is where we're at now. And now we're at, oh, they're throwing TV shows. So Coke has changed TV shows. T has changed TV shows. And that's where we're at now. Which books is this? Do you want to talk about? 
Which wants books to talk is about books <laughs> with multiple Z's? Books is it? Books is it? Books is, 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 is. Fucking, I've so, had two yinglings and I'm like, Argh. I want to talk about a book because we talked about superpowers. We talked about a, we talked, we we've touched on a couple different books. I want to talk about the villains code. Ooh, Ooh, that sounds good. So hold on, did you read it or did you audiobook it? Both. So let me ask you a question: Is this a is this a segue off of the uh, Lucifer stuff topic? No, no. On completely, completely no, separate. Completely Let, separate. Don't let's give a shit. jump onto something okay. else that no. we beat that. Well, horse. I just I just want I just want to make sure and confirm that it was or was not. Before Pearl's touching it. the cords. Make sure your mics are good. Yep, my mic's good. Pearl, Pearl's laying on my foot. She good. Yeah, her good. tail touched him. And yeah. now and now my foot. Her, is her everything her. touched him because it's Pearl and she's not. She's not a graceful beastie. Pearl might as well have epilepsy. Uh, <laughs> she, she she is a shaky dog. But books, okay. okay villains Code. So, so I'm, a, I'm excited villains because code I have no idea about it. By Drew books. Hayes. And I've actually suggested this to you before, but I've been recently re-reviewing it. and Re-re-re-re-re-reviewing it. Yeah, you know how I cycle through really good books over and over again? Bro, you still need to finish Lord of the Rings for my daughter. Okay, I because no, I, I once once she starts, you need to start fucking coming around your way home and read at least an hour a day, like of Lord of the Rings. Okay, The Hobbit. Wait. Let's fucking go. When when she's when she's old enough to, uh, let's wait, say wait. two and a half years. Two and, and a half, half years. Another old. year. Yeah, another year, and then we're good. Because in the reason I say that is because my mom. In the reason I have such a verbaceous love four books and reading is because when I was a child my mom used to read to me and this is why I love audiobooks because someone's reading to me to the point that the first book my parents ever bought me was Where the Wild Things Are oh I love that book so my mom, my mom used to read it to me sent me the OG book really the OG book yeah yeah to the, the point where I'm cover. packing all my shit no it was originally printed on soft cover really paperback really it was originally printed on paperback Cardboard, like shitty cardboard. Yeah. It's in pristine condition. I have. And that's something you put in a fucking frame. No. 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 Why? Because they're, yes, I understand as a collector item, but it has so much sentimental value to me. I want to share it with my kid. You want to share it with his kid. Because it meant so much to me that he's talking about what got him into the books where he has this whole book series starting with Villain's Code or. Going with Villains Code is like, but where's the base? So, I mean, I have the six book co- like collection of Dr. Seuss that I had when I was a kid. And I have, okay. I still had that. I, yep. I still have that. And I, I couldn't tell you what. I bought the remastered for my kid because but I don't know where mine are. I, I have that. So, anyways, the Villains Code. So we we talked about superpowers in our previous. So we talked about the good guys briefly. Yes. Seriously, check out the series. Great fucking series. So now, if I'm recommending a series, you should probably check it out because I'm retarded. <laughs> like I don't really read books much, but this book it kept me so in tune on superpowers. So and villains I code. Concur. So is the, the, the the villains code is not in the same universe. Right, it's a completely different universe, completely different characters, completely different everything. Right, like the powers work differently, the whole shebang. But it starts out, and you're following the main character, and the main character is Tor- Tori Rebus. Okay, she is a tech genius who, okay. through a technical experimental accident, gained power to turn into fire. Okay, so she owns. Tech as a no, genius. No, no, no. Stop. She, it, she lost her parents when she was young, blah, 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 whatever. And so she is trying to rob this big, you know, th- this big tech firm, right? She's trying to rob this place for their for their technical information, right? Um, she's been a villain for a little bit. Heck yeah. You know, she walks into a trap. The trap. And is this where the story starts? Or this is this is exactly where so the story it, starts. It this predates the, talk. It touches briefly on, and then it goes, and you played yourself. Yes, 
And it is, she walks in and she finds out that, like, oh, she's she's trapped. Like, they've got, like, cooling elements that keeps her from fire form from because being able fire. to escape. 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 <laughs> escape. And, and everything. And... And so she's like, holy shit, I'm super boned right now. And then it turns out, it's like, okay, well, we want to offer you a job offer. What is super boned? Super boned is like, you got screwed over. Oh, now like, double that. You got super screwed over. You got bent over and yeah. with glass shards. Yes. yes. Gotcha. yes. Okay. Yes. It's okay. Like, okay. Not only do you have your bill due, you have your bill twice. Ah, uh, I gotcha. With At least. Got yeah, it. yeah. You got screwed over. So she's sitting there and someone comes on the intercom and they're like, well, we want to provide you a job offer. And she's like, bitch, I don't, I don't know who the fuck you think you are. I'm not about that life. I don't know. American government to date has done 300 and change job offers for people that are, instead of doing prison time, come be our expert yes. of this. Yes. So it, FBI, CIA, yeah, NSA. I mean, so you know, as other agencies are recruiting criminals all the time to do because what they're, they're experienced in. So why not so do it in a book series? As right. she's as she's on the intercom, through like one of the walls opens up, and one of the great super villains of her age oh, shit. flies in in his power armor. Mechaniacal is his super villain name. And he's like, okay, well, you can either come work for us in Apprentice to be part of our super villain guild, or we're going to yeah. kill you. Oof. So it, she has two job offers at this point. <laughs> Death, or... And so it follows her as she's joining the super villain guild, and she apprentices... What's this book series called? Uh, the Villain's Code. Because I got a couple of uh, credits that I haven't touched in a minute. <laughs> I've been trying to get you to get into this one for a while. Villain's Code. Yes, by Drew Hayes. Is it better than Super Powered? It's as good. If not better? No, it's as good. Okay, so so you, they're equal. Super Powered is very, very good. That if you're not jumped into it within the first hour, I'd say. Yeah. So... I, I read at one and a half times speed. It Listen actually, at one let's and a half. be fair, because it wasn't until he got closer to the end of the first book that he really got bought in. Mm. Uh, Villains Vigilantes Volume 1. Is that the first one? That's not the first one. That is a novella based off of that one. Um, it's Forging Hephra. Forging Hephaestus. Okay. That's her first one. That's the first one. And bought. <laughs> 26 hours. <laughs> because I enjoy my whole hell divers type. Yeah. Like, but I'm, I seriously am tired of the whole marine barrage so, right now. Fall, At book seven. Yeah. Um, I need a break. So, I mean, really, when we're, when we're following toward. Tori Rebus, who obviously is forging Hephaestus. So, what's her villain name going to be? I do remember you've talked about this. Hephaestus. Yep. But, it, and we're following her inclusion into the villain game. Her and career. How this, and, and, and how it starts to, how she integrates into the society. And once again, Drew Hayes really builds a good world. He the does. world building is phenomenal. And you won't tell till he's done until later on in the series when he's like, we're going to start building off. But even then, you're like, to, to let, me, let me know when you're building off. Let me know when you're building off. It's like, oh shit, I got one chapter left. Oh, you're building off. And to, it's to the point to where it's two books so far in a novella, which is just like some short stories. But like, I've listened to the novella because the novella is so good, like three or four times. Okay. Like it is that good. Like I am so fucking in. Like I'm re-listening to the. I just re-listened to the novella on audiobook, and then I'm re-listening to the second book on audiobook because I was like, 
Well, the novella was this so is, uh, good. This uh, Hef- is Hephaestus or uh, Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Do you and know the, who Hephaestus is? It's the lady villain. No, we're no. we're going. Up, he's talking about probably Roman. Hephaestus is one of the Greek gods. Oh, okay. oh Greek. So you have <laughs> you have two gods. It was either Roman or Greek. Yeah. And, I don't and, know and who Hephaestus is. At yeah, this point. no, Hephaestus is the Greek god of forging. Okay. And there was for, a couple different that I the could guess. Materials. What's that? Forging in this sense is the gathering of materials or forging of weapons. Forging of weapons. Okay. So yeah, no, I absolutely one hundred percent want you to get into this. Well, I just purchased it. It's gonna jump on top of my whole marine barrage of you. You if you've gotten if you've hit burnout on your other series, you need to jump into. Forging Hephaestus because... Well, I have all the other oh, books, so I can always jump back to those. Oh, it's so good. It's so good! Okay. Go ahead. Um, now I need y'all to fuck that like button. And you know, throw a, subscribe. And throw a comment below. So this has been you the heard ending. It. Like button, subscribe. I'm you Mike Holberson. Throw a comment below. I'm Keeper. I'm Kelt. You'll have a blessed night. Woo! Deuces, bro.